we are on our way up to Twin Lakes to take a look at some of the work that's going on up there with the guys. Uh, Scott had a question for us, so I'm gonna run up there and look at this deck. There's a, it's like a generic detail that uh, was kind of provided, kind of a catch-all type thing for these decks. And I'm not sure if it's gonna necessarily work out uh, perfectly with this particular scenario. So I'm gonna go up there and we're gonna see if we can figure out a solution. And uh, we'll go from there. See, there's plenty of people out and about. It's Monday, folks. Uh, looks like everybody and their brother is up here at Twin Lakes. I'd like to go up there and get a shot of those falls coming in. That uh, looks really majestic over there. Let's see if we can do that before we leave. I'll see you at the office or uh, other where. All right, so I came up for Scott and Ed real quick. And uh, we've got a prescriptive detail for these for these decks that we're doing. Yeah, this one's got a little bit of issues. We got a big pad right here that was already existing. And they're actually, we got some power running right here. And they're asking for uh, huge footings, 36 by 36 and then 24 deep, which is, uh, extreme overkill in my opinion but um being that that's a non-bearing ledger we're going to uh we're gonna cut these out get the depth that we need and uh call ron out for an inspection got the rebar bender out making some cages These here were ones that we already did. These things are so cool. Maybe someday I'll have the money to get one of these for our snow removal operations. That's a sweet, sweet rig right there. People enjoying the lake here. This water is just crystal clear. You can see the falls coming in there. June Lake Loop. 
this place is just ridiculous. I don't know where this water comes from. Like last week we were here, had this all opened up all the way around the machine and it didn't even seem like there was any water that was coming through. Now we're <laughs> right back to all this water. I, I can't believe it. But, um, so I had a nice land bridge that I built all the way around this thing. I could see this water coming here and I have it diverted to go over there. And uh, this one here is just, it's almost like the, it, it, it <clears throat> the water shifted somehow. But uh, I think I know what I need to do. I need to cut a trench right here into this one and have a trench right here to where the idea would be all of this, all of this here, because it's coming out over there. So if I cut this trench right here and tie it into this, this is already flowing good. Uh, I think that could help. I don't know, this is, this is insanity here, absolute insanity. Okay, so the idea is this. I've got this upper channel of water that's it's leaking into this hole. So I basically blocked it off with this dirt here. <clears throat> but I've got to get this water right here to flow all the way around, go around this way instead of dumping into here. So... We're a little high right back there. I need from about from about right there all the way over to there, about a foot lower. And the only way they're gonna be able to do that is by hand. So we're gonna have to get some rubber boots, some shovels, and we're gonna start down there at the low point and bring that hump, take that whole hump out, everything about a foot lower about six, eight inches lower here. That way we can lower this right here about four or five inches. And this right here will be the highest point. Everything should start flowing all the way around. All right, we got the high boy put together and I'm gonna make a little lunch since I'm here solo today. So that was the leftovers from the weekend, the Brussels sprouts and the asparagus. I just threw some butter in there. I got this chicken right here that I barbecued and that New York. And then I've got my garlic teriyaki, which is really good. So what I'm going to do here is get this going. And I'm going to just throw all this stuff in there and sear it up for a second. Just, just to get it warm. Not really doing that in the interest of cooking. Just to get it warm. And um, get it warmed up enough and it should make a nice little lunch. Okay, I got it going. Warm that up a little. I'm gonna add a little soy to that. And that should make a really good little flavor combo. And here we go. That took about five minutes with leftovers. And it saved me about 30 bucks. Don't know why I didn't think of that sooner, but um, that's the dog's rice that I give them every day with their food. And I just went ahead and threw a little bit in a bowl, warmed it up. I'm gonna. I'm going to put it in here and mix it up, and that's even going to just make it that much better. It's really good, though. Bon Appetit. I just saw somebody in the comments. <clears throat> they wanted to hear a review on the hay bike. So that's the first e-bike that we got. We've had that one the longest. And it's been a good bike. We've put uh, some miles on it, not a whole lot. But one thing I do like about this one for up here is the big fat tires, uh, especially for going off road. It, it handles the mild trails a little bit better. It's not quite as squirrely and it's just overall a little bit more stable of a bike. So I like that. 
it's really fast. It's actually faster than the Hofsco. Um, that's a surprising because it's a little bit heavier, but it's just got a lot of power. And um, it's got the headlight in the front. Um, the, the battery life has been great. It, we've only charged it one time since we've had it. And we probably, I mean, we probably put about 50 miles on the bike. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, the only thing, um, one of the things that is kind of a downfall, I wish it had a little bit more beefy front shocks because with that battery, it is a little heavy. And, um, you know, the heavier you are, uh, the less good those shocks are going to do for you. So that would be one thing I would tell them to maybe beef up the front shocks a bit. Other than that, it, it, it's a good running bike. It handles well. It's fun to ride. And versus the Hofsco, it's fun too. It's a little bit different. It's got the throttles on the left side on this, which is really not normal. Like most motorcycles, three-wheelers, like anything you ride, especially like with a thumb throttle, a quad, whatever, it's going to be on the right-hand side. So that would be the one thing on this bike that I, I would say I wish it was on the right-hand side. Um, I like the rack. It's nice to have that little rack. You can carry um, some little payload behind you. This thing moves along right at about 28 miles an hour. I think this one is just over 30. So like I said, this one's a tad bit faster. They're both really good bikes for the money and um, we haven't had any issues with either bike. They've both, they, they've run great and um, we're still, you know, testing them and riding them on a daily basis. Like I said, we're gonna end up giving these away eventually. So after the Razor giveaway on Labor Day, we'll probably start with the hay bike. We'll do some kind of contest. I'm hoping you guys that I have the website up this week. I've got some really cool designs, hoodies, uh, all kinds of stuff that we've been just playing around with. And I'm gonna throw it up there. It's gonna be like our initial launch of um, just, you know, Plow Brothers, Mammoth Mountain Life Gear. Really, this stuff's more just, it's got the logos, stuff like that. It's not anything special. I am, however, <clears throat> working with a, a design, um, fulfillment facility that does more high quality outdoor gear and we are trying to put together something to actually make a real brand so that's that's something that's really exciting we want to make a a real brand of high quality outdoor gear and i think that's going to be great i think it's going to be awesome and it's not just going to be like a cheap sweatshirt with a logo on it it's going to be real gear that uh is you know can be used in real applications in the field so construction gear outdoor gear mountaineering stuff uh, i've been working with a few guys on that and just it takes time to do all this stuff along with having a full-time job and getting your excavator stuck in the mud so um you know we're going as fast as we can with all of it but it just takes time so be patient stick around we still got a lot of fun things that we're continuing to do and it's going to be pretty exciting. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed Monday's video. We're just getting started for the week. Things are getting back to normal. Um, got through 4th of July, all that good stuff. And uh, I'm going to finish up this video with a good friend of mine, Clark Tapia, his son, Caden is uh he's an up-and-coming musician and he really just does it for fun but he's actually pretty good so i'm gonna leave a couple clips here at the end of this video let me know what y'all think in the comments